A dynamical system is about how things change over time. Now the things that change are represented by state variables. In the simplest case, we're going to consider just having one state variable. And let's let m be the number of moose in a population. Now, these moose are breeding and dying, so the number changes from year to year. So let's represent time by a new variable. Let's call it t. And t will be time in years. Then, m sub t is the number of moose in year t. m sub t is just a single number. Now, these moose could be changing continuously over time, but let's say that we take a census of the population once a year. We'll have snapshots of the moose population. And so, let's say we have the first snapshot, well, that'd be at year zero, and we call that snapshot m naught, or m naught, or m zero, whatever you want to call it. And let's say that's about 1,000. So imagine we have 1,000 moose in year zero. Since we measure moose only once a year, our model of how the moose population changes over time will be a model of going from one snapshot to another. We'll need a rule for how to go from, let's say, the population in year zero to the population in year one and from population in year one to year two, etc. We'll have to have a rule for all these transitions. Now since we are using discrete time steps, the resulting dynamical system is a discrete time dynamical system. But since that's too many words for me, I usually just call it a discrete dynamical system with it being understood that time is what's discrete. To come up with a rule for how the population, the moose population evolves over time, let's imagine the moose are successful so that in each year their population increases by 8%. How can we write down this, this rule mathematically? Well, let's think of what the change means mathematically. The change from, let's say, year 0 to year 1, well, what is that change? Well, we have to take the population size in year 1, m sub 1, subtract off the population what it was originally, m naught. So the change is m1 minus m naught. We can continue in this way. So let's say we want to get the change in year 1 to year 2. Well again, what does that change? Well, it's going to be the population in year 2, m2, minus the population in year 1. So it'll be m2 minus m1. We could do this for general. Let's say, okay, let's start with year t. So if year is t, then the next year, well, that's going to have to be year t plus 1. So the change from year t to year t plus 1, well, that's just going to be the population size in year t plus 1, that's the later population size, that's m t plus 1, minus the previous population size, which is just m sub t. So m sub t plus 1 minus m sub t is the change from year 1 to year t plus 1. Now what do we want that change to be? We want it to be an increase of 8%. Well, okay, so 8% of what? We want it to be an 8% of m sub t, because that's the, that's the population size we started with. So we want the change from m time t to t plus 1 to be 8% of m sub t which is 0 0.08 times m sub t. And that is our dynamical rule. The change is 0 0.08 times m sub t. And that's our dynamical system. I guess we should add one more thing. We should put back the initial condition that in year 0, that m naught is 1,000. That's our initial condition. So coupled with the initial condition m naught equals 1,000, and our rule m t plus 1 minus m sub t because equals 0 0.08 m sub t, we can calculate the uh, moose population in any resulting time. And that's our dynamical system.